Hi, I'm Ren Wilson, and I am so happy to be celebrating Pride Month with the Saints and Sinners LGBTQ Literary Festival. I was a 2022 finalist, and I would like to share a part of a new work with you guys. Um, it's called Drury and Evergreen. Are you constipated again? The bartender comes by my end of the counter to ask, leaning onto his forearms as he scans me with a dubious look. What? I splutter, choking on a sip of my martini. After coughing out a lung and a little sprinkle of pee that I'll go to my grave before admitting to, I demand, dude, where the fuck did that come from? I haven't seen you scrunch your face up like that since sophomore year. Jesus, do you remember that? He chortles, slapping the dark stained wood in between us with the palm of his hand. You got high and ate all of the shredded cheese we had in the apartment, then took half a box of laxatives and turned the bathroom into a crime scene when it made you constipated. Gabriel, for fuck's sake, I hiss, glancing around me with burning cheeks to see if anyone else had heard him. Shut it. I'm a loudmouth, what can I say? It's one of your favorite things about me, he says with a flourish of his hand. Though for that matter, what the hell are you doing here anyway? You usually don't roll up until hours from now, lying to yourself and pretending like you're coming out to socialize with someone other than me for once. Oh my God, chill, I groan, burying my face in my hands in a desperate bid to fend off any further cross-examination. Just bend over, unclench, and tell me what the fuck is going on already. I continue arguing with him for a minute, then decide to just wave the white flag. I need sex therapy, but I can't afford it. My mother, beneath my breath, wanting to just get it over with, but unable to admit the words any louder. Fortunately for me, my best friend is half deaf from too many concerts and the bar is loud. Say what? My sex life is a mess and I'm too broke to see a therapist for it, I say, raising my voice a couple decibels. Huh? He scrunches his face up in confusion. What did you say? I'm bad at having fucking sex, okay, I snap. My blood pressure rising and my face starting to heat up. Brent dumped me because of it and I need help, but I'm too goddamn poor for it. Girl, I haven't heard a godforsaken word you've said in the past two minutes. Frustration is beginning to write itself across his face as well, his lips pursing and one eyebrow raising in judgment. Just say it with your damn chest already. For the love of fucking God, I spit, slamming my hands down on the bar and leaning in close to his face as I shriek like a banshee. The only way I can orgasm is if I pretend that my partner is a fucking vampire, okay? It takes several beats for my admission to visibly process. Even when it does, Gabe doesn't respond with words. He just seems to choke on his spit before letting out a pathetic wheeze of air. So I keep going with my verbal diarrhea. My salary at work is shit and the copay for therapy with my insurance is too expensive. So now I get to spend the rest of my life either faking orgasms or being dumped by assholes like Brett because I asked to play an interview with the vampire in the background while we had sex one too many times. He just continues to stare, brown eyed gaze and blinking. I'd start to wonder if he's even still breathing if it weren't for the way he's sucking in lungfuls of air like he's greedy for it, frozen in place like a statue. Hello? I say after waiting several minutes for a response. Anybody home? I raise my hand inches from his face and snap. He reacts on instinct, slapping my hand away with an unforgiving swat. Ouch, you freaking dick, I cry, nursing my injury. I'm sorry, I must have just blacked out or had a seizure or something. His eyelashes flutter several times as he pauses to collect himself, then turns back to face me head on. Excuse me, what the fuck? Knew I shouldn't have told you, I say, downing half of my abandoned martini in one swallow. My eyes sting and my throat burns, making me wheeze. I've never been good with alcohol. You said Brent dumped you, he asks, narrowing his eyes. As in part-time DJ with the micropenis, Brent? Yeah, I sound like you are at this point, all glum mopiness. Who the hell gave that man permission to breathe, let alone have the audacity to dump someone? He turns his gaze skyward, like the tacky matte black ceiling would give him any answers. He said I'm a bad lay and that my inability to orgasm was becoming a real hindrance to his self-esteem. I down the rest of my drink and slide the glass over to Gabe, tapping the bar twice in the way I know he absolutely despises. He gives me a dirty look, but starts to pull the necessary bottles out anyway. I'm sorry, but that's obviously bullshit. He's just trying to make you feel responsible for him being bad in the sack. You can get off from five seconds of foreplay and two pumps of his thumb-sized dick. Bitch, please. He scoffs and shakes his head. Cry me a fucking river. It's not just him, though, I spill, more than ready to have another drink in my hands. Before him, it was Scott, and before that, it was Caleb, and they all had one thing in common. They couldn't fuck to save their lives. They couldn't even get me wet. I lean in to confide, pitching my voice low. 
I'd have to look at photos of Tom Cruise's Lestat beforehand if I knew that they were trying to get lucky. Bitch, no, he whispers back, looking horrified. Antonio Banderas was so much hotter in that movie. Totally agree. But it's easier to squint my eyes and just pretend they're Tom. You do tend to date short, basic-ass white men, he muses, then goes to pass me my second martini. He glances down at it, does a double take, and bursts out laughing. Oh my god, it's all making sense now. Fuck you, I snap, snatching it away from him. I cradle my vampire's kiss cocktail between both hands, keeping it safe as I raise it up to my mouth. I take a hearty drink and allow the warmth of the vodka to rush over me before I continue, lips sufficiently loosened. First time I ever had a genuine orgasm was in the back seat of Caleb's car during a showing of Twilight at the old drive-in theater. He started fingering me in the hopes I would reciprocate with a hand job. I let out a dreamy sigh at the memory. I ripped the door handle off when I came. Gabe makes another choking sound, then grabs my martini and drains half of it in one go. At my dirty look, he dismisses. It's the least you owe me. Just be grateful I'm not suing you for damages related to the mental distress your little heterosexual stories are causing me. Dick, I grumble. Pussy, he mocks in return. So you can't orgasm with basic ass tods and also can't afford therapy. What's the plan then? Find a dude named Edward and convince yourself his last name is secretly Cullen. I pull the business card out of my pocket and slap it down between us without a word, then rescue my drink back. You remember the time I saw a guy here also drinking one of these? I ask, fingering the glass stem. Yeah, he draws the word out, sounding suspicious. He was doing it just to get your attention. It was the only play for a crusty ass loser like him. No way he was picking you up of his own volition. He laughs, shaking his head as he goes to pick up the card off the counter. Poor sucker really thought it might work. I waited until your shift ended and you left to go to that weird fashion designer's house party. Then I fucked him in the bathroom. The sound of his face meaning his palm is audible even over the booming bass of the music. Bitch, you really are nasty. He raises the card I leveled to examine, muttering to himself as he does. You need some damn help. His eyebrows furrow as he reads aloud, Madam O, sex psychic and cosmic love curator. He looks at me bewildered. What the fuck does that even mean? No idea, but it's cheap, I shrug. I've been trying to convince myself to go since I found it in the waiting room at the mental health clinic this afternoon. He stares at the card for several moments, seeming to be stuck in a silent debate with himself. After some invisible turning point, he slaps it back down in front of me and announces, we're going once my shift ends. Then he points down at my liquid courage and demands, better drink fast. I'm off in 20 minutes. And that's where I'm going to end. Thank you.